Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. November 22, 2022. Memorial of St. Cecilia, Virgin and Martyr. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud, one who looked like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap the harvest, for the time to reap has come, because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. So the one who was sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, who also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, who was in charge of the fire, and cried out in a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Use your sharp sickle and cut the clusters from the earth's vines, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and cut the earth's vintage. He threw it into the great wine press of God's fury. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, The Lord is King. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia. Remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob Today's readings can be a bit scary. The passage from the book of Revelation speaks of heavenly beings using sharp sickles to cut the ripe harvest. The psalm portrays God as the judge who will rule with justice and constancy. In the Gospel, Jesus forecasts not only the end of the Jerusalem temple, but also a time of false prophecy, wars, and natural disasters, all before the end of time. St. John's vision is that of the Son of Man and his angels harvesting the good fruit and throwing the bad and useless growth away as a sign of God's anger. 
That which is discarded and needs to be crushed are the grapes of God's wrath. John Steinbeck, as many authors, used biblical phrases or imagery. Thus, his book, The Grapes of Wrath, comes from this biblical passage. Obviously, God is not pleased by those who fail to follow the Lord Jesus. The final judgment scene will be an unpleasant experience for those who have not sought the Lord Jesus or his Abba Father. And the worst part of that is that it will have everlasting effects. The psalmist praises God as the divine ruler who will establish a true reign of justice. Those who are in relationship with the Lord will experience the joy and gladness as God exacts accountability from all people. God will not be swayed by false pretense, but God will judge with equity and consistency. The Gospel presents Jesus prophesying rough times ahead. Not only will the holiest building in Judaism be destroyed, but other disasters and hard days are on the horizon. Although Jesus begins the reign of heaven while he is on earth, the culmination will not occur for a while. In the meantime, things will not be perfect. Evil will still have power. Lies and false teachings will occur. The ultimate experience of victory is still not fully experienced on the current earth and is yet to happen. These readings could lead one to live in dread. They sound ominous. Some people see our current times, with the pandemic, meteorological problems of fires, hurricanes, wars, in such places as Ukraine, civil unrest in our own country in Iran to name just a few, as reasons to be fearful of the end times coming. Many see only the bad news. Yet, there is good news. The good news is that those who honestly strive to be disciples of the Lord Jesus and do what God has commanded will experience eternal blessings. The good news is that God has great things prepared for those who love the Lord Jesus. The not-so-good news is that we have to struggle through a lot of evil and difficult times before we can experience the fullness of those blessings, some other bad news. Those who have not lived in accord with God's directives will have to give an accounting of their actions. They will have to face God's wrath. There will be a judgment. The good news, though, far outweighs the bad news. Part of the good news is that we can still change our lives, metanoia, and turn more fully to God, ad deum. We can still accept God's gift of salvation and live in ways which show we are part of the good news, it is not easy to always be God-oriented. The lures of the world, the trying times, the amount of effort we must exert make it real work. It is hard to be loving and kind and to make the decision to serve others rather than self. Yet, the benefits are out of this world and we will have to wait until we are out of this world to fully enjoy them. As I think about all that, I am both unsettled and excited. My unsettled feelings stem from not wanting to have to go through any, more, rough times. It is no fun to think of natural calamities, or having to deal with uncaring individuals, or knowing that evil is working against me. I don't want financial institutions to go under, especially if it affects my retirement account. I don't want to have to suffer, be confrontational, or give more of myself. This is painful, exhaustive, and uncomfortable. It takes conscientious decisions on my part to keep my eyes focused where they should be, on the Lord Jesus and the Divine Promises. My excited feelings come from the realization of what blessings God has planned for me and all who strive to be disciples of the Lord Jesus. I know it will all be worth it, 
eventually and eternally. It is all part of God's plan. We are invited to begin our participation in the reign of God now, knowing that the fullness of that reign will not take place until we have journeyed through this veil of tears. It again reminds me of the importance of not focusing so much on seeking pleasure now and looking forward to the delayed, but eternal, joy-filled experience awaiting us in the afterlife. The most important part of all this is giving God the glory and praise that is due. God is the truly just judge, who will be more than gracious to those who have striven to be in relationship with the Lord Jesus. Yes, God will demand we are held accountable for our lives, but with our continued seeking God's help and mercy, we will be able to live lives that give God the honor and adoration God deserves. As long as we authentically are seeking God and desiring to be faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus according to the word which God has given us, God will forgive our failings and draw us ever closer to the triune God. Let us give God all the thanks and gratitude that we should. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. The personal question or action for today. When I am facing difficult situations in my life, what gives me the most strength to keep on going? Do I turn to the Lord Jesus and reflect on his earthly experiences of facing trying times? What can I do to help reassure others that God is with them while they travel through this veil of tears? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, always just and ever loving. Through your gracious goodness, you gift us with more than we can ever fully appreciate. You promise to be with us as we travel through the difficult paths of life on earth. You not only reassure us of your compassionate understanding, but you have sent your Son, Jesus, to live among us to show us that you care enough to have Jesus walk in our sandals, along the sometimes rocky and perilous way. Jesus experienced every negative emotion, suffered excruciating pain, and experienced rejection, betrayal, and hatred from other humans. Jesus constantly struggled with the forces of evil. As we reflect on his life, we are reminded that you allowed Jesus to experience our human existence to its highest and lowest points so that we would be able to face whatever difficulties we may encounter. May we keep our eyes focused on our Master Teacher and give you praise. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, our brother and savior who continues to remind us of your love and who is living and reigning with you and the holy spirit our one and only god forever and ever amen presented by father frankie fernandez ofm capuchin justice peace integrity creation jpic capuchin goa